In this video, I'm going to be talking about maximum ZS. So if you've ever wondered, which is the maximum ZS? Is it the value in table 41 in the Warren regulations? Is it the value in the on-site guide? Do I need to calculate it? And why are the values all different? I will explain the differences in this video. So the first question is, where does the maximum ZS come from? The process for calculating the maximum ZS is explained in Appendix 3 of BS 7671. The values are calculated by multiplying the voltage by C min, which is a, which is a correction factor of 0.95 to allow for differences in supply voltage, and then dividing by the minimum current required to operate the protected device, IA. The values for IA can be found on the time curve chart for the protective device. For protected devices that are included in the time curve charts in BS7671, there is a table next to the chart which shows the minimum current to operate the protected device within the disconnection time. For devices that aren't shown in BS7671, such as MCCBs, the information can be requested from the manufacturer. So here we have an example of how the maximum ZS is calculated for a 16 amp type B60898 MCB. The value for IA is 80 amps according to the time curve chart, figure 3A4 in BS7671. So the equation becomes ZS max equals 230 multiplied by 0.95 divided by 80, which gives us a result of 2.73 ohms, which is the same as the figure in table 41.3 in the wiring regulations. So the value in table 41 is the maximum ZS. However, when measuring the ZS, it is important to bear in mind that the impedance of the circuit will likely increase when the circuit is under load. This is because when electrical testing is carried out, the load will not be connected, and so the cable will not be working at its maximum operating temperature. When the circuit is under load, the temperature of the cable will increase, which will also cause the impedance of the circuit to increase. So in other words, the values for maximum ZS will need to be adjusted to allow for the difference between the temperature of the cable at the time of the test and the temperature of the cable under load. So assuming an ambient temperature of 20 degrees C and a cable with a maximum operating temperature of 70 degrees C, Compliance is achieved by multiplying the maximum ZS in table 41 by 0.8, as described in Appendix 3 of BS 7671. So here is an example for adjusting the maximum ZS in table 41.3 for a 16 amp MCB to BSEN 60898 or an RCBO to BSEN 61009. So by multiplying 0.8 by the formula I mentioned earlier, UO times C min divided by IA, that basically reduces the ZS in table 41 by 20%. So that gives us a figure of 2.18 ohms. So multiplying the maximum ZS in table 41 by 0.8 reduces the figure by 20% to allow for the fact that the resistance of the circuit will increase when the circuit is under load, and therefore ensuring that the maximum ZS will not be exceeded when the circuit is under load. But why 20%? Well, 20% is the difference between a conductor operating at 20 degrees C and a conductor operating at 70 degrees C. So in other words, the impedance of the circuit could increase by as much as 20% when the circuit is under load. So the next question is, why are the values in the on-site guide different? The answer is because the values in the on-site guide are calculated based on an ambient temperature of 10 degrees C. This makes sense because it's often colder when working on site, and so this can be a useful guide. Where it is known that the operating temperature will be different, it is possible to adjust the calculation for different ambient temperatures, and this is explained in the IET guidance note three. So in summary, the figures in table 41 of BS 7671 are the maximum ZS to comply with the disconnection time. However, these figures need to be adjusted 
to allow for the difference of the ambient temperature at the time of the test and the operating temperature of the cable when the circuit is under load. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please subscribe to my channel where I hope to add more videos on electrical engineering subjects.